second kings chapter 4 verse 4 and i'm going to read that verse it comes from a story of a woman who was a widow whose husband died and left a lot of debt to the family and she had two sons and the creditors came and they wanted to take two sons and make them slaves and she came to the prophet elijah and said hey what should i do and prophet elijah said in verse 3 and i'll read verse 3 and verse 4 he said to her go borrow vessels from everywhere from all your neighbors empty vessels do not gather just a few and when you have come in to your house you shall shut the door behind you and your sons and then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones means pour a little bit of oil that she had and uh, so she went from him shut the door behind her her sons brought the vessels to her and she poured in and it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to one of her sons bring me another one and he said there's no more vessels and the oil ceased this woman had a very interesting problem she had a money problem the problem was actually very severe it wasn't really her problem it was the problem that happened because her husband and her together they borrowed a lot of money and they could not pay money back to people and in those days you couldn't you couldn't file for bankruptcy what you did at those days is actually you did nothing what people did to you is they would come and they could kill you sometimes could make your children slaves or a lot of other really bad things could happen and this was the case with this woman she was a widow she had two sons she as a widow was waiting for her sons to grow a little bit and begin to provide for her take her into their houses to take care of her because she had no husband and now her sons are going to go into slavery because she had debt that she couldn't pay and these two poor children it wasn't their debt it was the debt of their father and their mother that got passed on to them it's important to realize that we never really leave our problems when we die those problems get passed on to other people spirits curses and a lot of problems they don't die when people die many times they actually get passed on to other generation and the other generation has to deal with the issues that some other generation didn't deal with and we as Christians must realize that we must deal with our issues because if we don't somebody else will have to do that for us and so these boys they grow up and they have this problem the mama has a very interesting idea instead of going to the welfare of their time or instead of looking for the billionaire of their time instead of looking for the rich person she goes to a prophet with the money problem now she didn't go to a prophet with the money problem because prophet was loaded she didn't go to the prophet because prophet somehow made money or he had a money machine in his backyard or he was dealing gold she went to the prophet because the prophet had anointing on his life anointing means he had this power of God on his life that even though he did not have much money per se he had the power of God and he could make things happen even though he did not have money she went to the prophet it's important to realize all of us in here as Christians have anointing we all have anointing the Bible says that that we all have anointing on our life but anointing is like money some have more others have less right you have all money and Bill Gates has money too the difference between you and me and the Bill Gates is the fact that we have money very little but we are not millionaires we're not billionaires and the brother Bill Gates who lives in Seattle he has a lot of money and sometimes you have a problem that you don't have a money for correct let's say your car breaks down and the expenses for it is three thousand dollars and your money is two hundred dollars what do you do in that problem you still have money but not enough to fix your problem we all have anointing but sometimes the level of our anointing is not big enough for the bigness of our problem sometimes the amount of the anointing we carry is good for the problems that we are facing but there are times when we face a problem that we look at our anointing box and we look at the problem and we see big problem small anointing what do you do then you find someone who has enough anointing for the problem that you face this woman's husband was a prophet 
son of a prophet. She had anointing in her life but she hit a problem that she had no anointing for and what she does she finds a man whose anointing is bigger than her problem. When you face a problem that's bigger than your anointing, find someone whose anointing is bigger than your problem and your problem will be over. Can somebody say amen? The reason why we go to Africa, the reason why we connected with other ministries is we recognize that many times not only our problems are smaller than our anointing, sometimes our dreams are bigger than our anointing. Our dream is not just to have the full sanctuary and these seats seated. Our dream is far bigger than that. And for that reason, we must hook up with people who have anointing enough for the size of our dream. Can somebody say amen? If, you, if you're broke and you got big bills, you got to find somebody who has a lot of money. That's what you do. That's what I do. If you have financial problem, you don't go to your broke cousin or your broke uncle or auntie. You go to someone in the family who is loaded. And you ask them, please hook me up with some. Give me some Benjamins. Send, send them some way. That's exactly what this woman does. She has anointing but it's not enough for her problem and she goes to someone who is loaded on the anointing, who has so much of it and she comes to him and says, hey I got a problem and you got a solution. Can you help me out? We've seen many people in our church who were delivered here at the prayer lines when we've seen many people who when we took them to Africa they were delivered there. Why? because of the level of the anointing. Can somebody say amen? Our desire is to get more of the anointing but while we are getting more we must recognize when you face a problem bigger than your anointing find someone who has anointing the size your problem. That's what this woman does. So she goes to him excuse me and she says help me out and he tells her okay I will but this is what we need to do. I want you to notice what the prophet does not do. He doesn't write her a check. I want you to notice what the prophet doesn't do. He doesn't cause the bills to evaporate or her debtors to die. I want you to notice what the prophet doesn't do. He doesn't call the king and says, could you fix this matter? Could you help you guys welfare problem for crying out loud? She's a widow. Help her out. He doesn't do that even though he could. What he does is he asks her a question. What do you have in your house? And she replies, a little bit of oil. He said, that's enough. He says, you're going to go back to your house. And with that little bit of oil that you do have, God is going to do a miracle. It's interesting that anointing many times does not create something new. But it enables something that's small to become something that's great. I remember uh, Pastor Vladimir Montian from Ukraine. He said uh, when he got married at the age of 17 and his wife left him because she was not a believer and uh, he was not a believer because at that time he was sitting in jail and he came out of jail, he got saved and his wife completely left him. It's been years and so now he's praying every day, God give me a wife and he put a description, you know, the figure, the, the eyes, the, the hair, everything. He just told God, this is, this is the kind of wife I want to see and make sure she's not worse than the one that I married before. He keeps praying and praying and praying. I mean, he had different people agree with him in prayer. And God told him to go get his old wife back. He says, God, no, give me, you know, new one. And he got the old one back. She got saved. And this is what he said. He says, I realized that God gave me a new marriage with the same spouse. God is able to give you a miracle with what you already have. Maybe you look at that and you say, yeah, that, that, no. But God, when he touches it, that becomes something beautiful. Can somebody say amen? So that's what blind people, when God heals blind people, he doesn't give them new eyeballs. He just touches the eyeballs they already have. When God touches lame people, he doesn't give them new legs. He touches the legs that they have. Many times God's anointing will touch what we have. And what we have sometimes is enough with God to make a difference in our life. We must understand God created the world out of nothing but everything else in the world he created out of something. 
he took dirt to make man and then he took man to make a woman and then he took man and a woman to make a child God always uses something to make something else and many times we come to God and we say God give me something something brand new out of the sky shipped by UPS and God says what do you have in your house he said no I don't have what it takes and God says if I touch it you will have what it takes Jesus took five loaves and two fish it's not enough to feed a multitude Jesus says watch when it lands in my hands it will feed the multitude and you will have enough for the next three weeks to take it to work to eat when God touches what I have what I have will become enough to meet my dreams and to fix my problems in Jesus name can somebody say amen Therefore, when you come to God, you must not limit God in expecting always to make something new, but in expecting Him to touch what I already have and to bless what I already have, so that will make something great and glorify His name. This woman, prophet says, you're going to go home and take this little bit of oil and start pouring into the jars. And as you pour into the jars, God is going to do a miracle. She closes the doors, brings the jars, the vessels, they're empty completely empty and she begins to pour and she realizes a miracle is happening right in front of her eyes a little bit of oil is not ending it's pouring she goes to another vessel it's pouring it's pouring the sons are watching there is no cameras no iPhones to record it no YouTube to upload it to but they are watching they're amazed fire is being coming back in their eyes hope is rising up we're no longer gonna be slaves we have a miracle in our own house this is awesome whole vessels are filled with oil and this is happened from the this small jar of oil they're so excited but they're still broke a miracle in the house but on the outside of the house there's still mess and inside of the house is a miracle on the outside of the house the same thing and that's what the woman goes to the prophet and she says what should I do I had a mirror I see a miracle this is incredible but prophet I gotta let you know I am still struggling with finances even though I have a miracle in my house I want to point something out to you and me today that God wants to do a miracle first in the house before he brings a change to our life the house represents today you and me the house represents your mind and it represents your soul the house represents your thoughts your motives your intuition your mindset it represents your conscience it represents your inner world when you come in contact with the anointing of God the first miracle that begins to happen is not in your pocket the first miracle begins to happen is in your head when the anointing of God begins to touch your head and begins to change your mind and it begins to change the way you look at things and when your mind is changed your life has a chance to be transformed when a mind is not changed and life is transformed that transformation will never last through the test of time and therefore we must make an effort like this woman to do whatever it takes and sometimes you have to dump your vessels from all the garbage that you have and come to God to have a miracle in your mind the reason you and I are in church is not just so we can socialize you and I are here so you and I can have a miracle in our head the reason why there's sermons and the reason why we have podcasts in the Bible is so that you and I can have a miracle in the head so your vessels can be full of oil. But their vessels can never be full of oil until vessels get empty of junk. When you come to church, bring empty vessels to church. Bring a notebook, bring a pen. When you read the Bible, don't be a scholar telling God what he should do. Be, read the Bible like a student learning what God is saying for you to do approach God as a child say God I'm here to learn Jesus says if you don't come down and be like children you will never enter the kingdom of God in order to have a miracle in the mind I must present to God an empty vessel 
a vessel that's hungry a vessel that says God I don't know nothing even though I read the Bible five or six times but I know nothing I'm gonna take my notes like a madman like as though I've never heard anything why because I want to have a miracle in my mind when a miracle happens in my mind my life has a chance to change present to God an empty vessel and watch what you pour into your head a woman poured oil into the vessels and the miracle happened every single person in here is pouring something into each into our vessels and the two holes through which we pour everything into our vessel is our eyes and our ears watch what you pour into your vessel make sure what you pour is oil holy ghost good things most of us don't have a money problem we have a mind problem when our mind gets fixed our money will be changed when our house gets filled and the house has a miracle a life has an opportunity to be changed and that's exactly what has happened to this woman she has a change in her house her house has a miracle but everything on the outside seems the same and then she comes to the prophet and says nothing changed on the outside but on the inside everything is so different what should I do then and the prophet says take what you have now in the house hire a truck or a donkey load it on the trailer find a marketplace find a place in the market set up a table set up a booth put the prices and sell everything God has made in the house can you imagine you're a widow you're not a salesperson you didn't sell anything before you're, a, you're shy you're not really good at talking to people and the prophet tells you if you really want to have money and you want to go from having a miracle in the house to having a miracle in your pocket then you gotta take what God has done here and take it out there and actually work at it and the woman does it the problem we have with us many times is when God does a miracle in us it never goes out of us and it never gets worked at and therefore it remains a miracle on inside and a mess on the outside because what God works in I must work out and the only place where success comes before work before uh, success that comes before work is in dictionary everywhere else in life work always goes first the only place where people are successful before they work is in dictionary. Every other place people work first and then they have success. This applies to salvation. This applies to every area of our life. What God does in us, we must be eager to work it out of us and see that become a miracle in our own lives. This really helps me, I think, in pictures and this illustration might not be most theologically correct and it might not be most impressive could be corny but I want to illustrate the point this is your mind and those people who are listening or will be listening and who cannot see I'm holding a cloth in my hand there is a bucket that has water and there is a, a little bin that has no water the bucket that has the water represents the anointing of God. It represents the Word of God. It represents preaching. It represents teaching. This cloth represents your mind. This is your mind. It's dry. This bin represents your life. Well, it's empty. When you have a dry mind, you will have an empty bin. When our mind does not have a miracle, our life wouldn't either. And the first thing that God wants to do to bring water into our life, the first thing that God wants to do to bring change into our life is not just dump water in, not just dump blessings in. Usually that's not how it happens. People who get blessings dumped into them five, six years later end up worse than they were before. People who win lotteries or people who just get inheritance from their family whose mind is not changed very soon because of so many cracks in their life, they lose everything they get very soon. 
So God's method and God's way is to make your mind which is dry, empty, full of nothing. God dips the mind in his word and he soaks it with his anointing. And when your mind is soaked, see when you read the Bible, when you come to church, when you listen to a podcast, you're soaking your mind in the word of God. Can somebody say amen? You are soaking your mind in the principles of God. You are soaking your mind in the ways of God. But your life is still empty. And then it starts slowly dripping. Slowly. You begin to notice small changes. You begin to notice better things at work. But they're very small. And so you keep going more for more soaking, more soaking. And, and with time you get a little bit more, it's dripping a little bit more. But this is what we must understand. When you soak into the presence of God, your mind is changed. Your life only changes when you squeeze what you soaked. When we squeeze, God said to her, you go what God has done in the house and you take it outside and you sell it. You work it out of what God has worked inside. And when you work it out what God has done inside, your life is going to change. Not just your mind, not just your heart, but now your whole life is going to be completely transformed. Can somebody say amen? That's exactly what happens when people get delivered. When you get delivered, let's say, you know, you were tormented by a spirit of pornography. You get delivered, you come home and you notice, man, I'm so different. But I met with many guys who after their deliverance, still fall and their life still has pornography why because your deliverance is not meant to just stay like this you have to soak stuff out of your deliverance you have to soak stuff out with discipline you have to soak stuff out and only then you will begin to notice the change in your life can somebody say amen same thing happens with salvation. When we are saved, we are soaked into the presence of God. But the Bible says we have to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. If you don't squeeze water out of this, how many of you know if I hold this cloth for two, three hours, this cloth will become dry. And many times what we do as Christians is this, is we come and we get a revelation from God. We hear a message or we hear a sermon. And it soaks us in. Oh, that was so good. But we do nothing about it. And after a while, that revelation gets dry. It becomes useless. And we go back to God and we say, God, give me another revelation. And we keep going like this and this and that. And we keep getting dry and keep getting dry. You have to understand one thing. God wants you to soak yourself in. Not so that you can dry up, but so you can squeeze everything you've learned and put it into your life. Success is soaking your mind into His Spirit and squeezing into your life by application of what you've learned. Jesus said, people who hear my words but they don't do what I say. They're like men who build this house on the, on the sand. A storm came and they fall apart. When we don't squeeze out what God has worked in, something happens. We eventually dry up. I hear young people all the time. They say, I want to know God's personal will for my life. Whether I should be an FBI agent or if I should be a politician. I want to know whether God wants me to be a missionary or a stay-home mom. Okay. You want to know God's personal will. God already revealed His general will, which is for you to save souls. Now imagine God standing there sees that his personal will, his per general will for which Jesus Christ died on the cross for, for which he died, this will to see people saved, eh, I don't invite people, I don't really mind, I don't really have time, I'm, that's not for me, I'm not social like Nazar shared, I'm not one of those people so you disregard his general will but God give me your personal will, God give me your personal will, God is not going to do that. We must understand. For us to, for God to give us a new revelation, we must squeeze of what already we have and work it out in our life. If we apply what we've learned, God is going to give us something new and God is going to do a miracle in our life. I went to the Scone three times. Every single time I went, honestly, that's exactly what happened. I felt like spiritually I got soaked in. 
but when I would come back you know would be encouraged but there's something that in my mind that was wrong I expected God to one day come and just take all of this water and dump it into my basin somehow in my mind I expected that it has to happen with God just flooding people to our church with God that I will come up on the stage one day and without me ever practicing without ever me trying before it just will come anointing will come upon me and I will just become this like unrecognizable person and many people will be healed and delivered and that's it and I already went twice to the Scone after coming back you know notice changes in my prayer life but but not much changes and one question by one person that provoked me last year and it provoked me deep on inside and this person doesn't even know how he provoked me he asked me this question it was in Vancouver he said so you've been to the ministry of prophet TB Joshua he said what has changed in your ministry since you got connected well I said well everything changed and then I thought about like really because when I look at my ministry at that time when we look at our ministry I was like really on the outside it looks the same as it used to be before we met ministry of prophet TB Joshua the problem was not with TB Joshua the problem is there are people who go to the Scone and TB Joshua looks at them and they go back to their churches and they realize I received what I had I'm gonna squeeze stuff out of it and there are people who keep get soaking 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 and they hope for a water to get into their bin by just soaking not realizing no matter how many soakings you do you gotta do some squeezing that means when you come back there has to be your part where you say you know what I'm gonna start acting on what God has deposited into my life and then if I run out of it I'm gonna go and get me some more I'm gonna start acting in faith and pray for the sick I will start acting in faith and inviting people I have enough to start acting right now can somebody say amen. I want us to believe for more but God wants us to use what we already have. God wants us to step out already and this week to recognize you have enough soaking to invite one person to Jesus Christ. We have enough soaking to lay hands upon the sick in our cell groups and to see them healed. Now maybe we don't have enough soaking to see people raised from the dead but we have enough soaking as the testimonies have been poured in today so that people's backs people's nightmares people's anxieties be completely healed in Jesus name when you receive deliverance at the prayer line and you walk in and two weeks everything is fine you must understand you cannot simply wait till you dry up you have to squeeze things out of your deliverance live different after your deliverance strategies completely work out what God has worked in this woman sold things and she immediately got out of her debt she didn't get out of her debt because she had a miracle in the house she got out of her debt because she took things out of her house and she went to the market and she started to sell it when I was in Ukraine and the ministry that I observed for a while was the ministry of Vladimir Montan that I mentioned we mentioned a few times in our church and it on the outside on the screen it looks so beautiful it looks so easy they do an altar call and you don't even understand whether it was an altar call or something and you see hundreds of people on the altar call like wow this is so awesome and so when I went in there and I expected that I'm going to see that God from heaven just takes and just just pours it pours it for them there's somehow like one lottery number and God just loves them and all other churches in Ukraine they're just bad and God for some reason chosen these people when I saw how much these people pray when I saw how hard they evangelize when I saw how like passionate and how zealous they are to win souls and for cell groups honestly I was disappointed that they did not have more and this is what I left home with God does not pour nothing into our bins he pours everything through our heads into our bins God first does a miracle in our mind and then when he does a miracle in our mind he expects us what we learn here to apply with our work to with our hands and with our lives that God expects when I pray on Friday night God give me souls that I do my job make sure my friends they come to Jesus Christ make sure I do my job that my cell group it grows and people in my cell group receive prayer and they receive instructions of how to maintain their miracle can somebody say amen, amen. 
God expects you when you learn about marriage that you don't just walk out being an encyclopedia about marriage but that you apply what you learn when you learn about personal finance that you don't just tell other people what to do but you apply what you learn if you don't apply what you learn what you learn will get style it will get old it will get dry and it will just become useless to you and your life will never change even though your head has it's possible to have a head full of revelation and a life empty of miracles we want to be a church that has a revelation in our head but also has miracles in our pocket and miracles in our life miracles in our church miracles in our cell groups and that's gonna happen when we apply what we have as a revelation can somebody say amen, amen. apply squeeze of what you know every person here today has something that God asks you to do that you still want him to give you a little bit more before you actually commit to do it do it today ask you three questions what is the problem that you're facing is the problem bigger than your anointing are you connected to someone who has more anointing than you the second question that I will ask you what are you soaking your head into every day is your is your head soaked into just the tv is your head soaked into just anything latest that comes out on itunes when it comes to music remember whatever you're soaking your head will reflect in your life and the third question is when you learn something from christ when you have a revelation are you squeezing it are you working it out are you walking it out as a church we are going to do that we have been doing that and we are going to squeeze it out more and that's why my decision is before next month before we go to scone my challenge and my prayer is God I want to squeeze out everything I've received already because so many people laid hands on you you got so much anointing that you can shake the world with and you're barely moving things with your pinky squeeze what you already received squeeze out what God already revealed to you begin to squeeze out begin to walk to the fullness of what you already have somebody says graveyard is the richest place in the world because that's where people did not squeeze things sermons were not squeezed poems were not squeezed songs were not squeezed ideas businesses were not squeezed relationships every single thing it died there why because people live their life being loaded with information and revelation and never squeezed anything into their life they just hope God one day will take all of these blessings and dump it into my bin and God doesn't do it like that God soaks your mind with revelation and he challenges you to squeeze your life with application